Oopsies. Okay. Uh, hi, everyone. Let me put my viewfinder down because look at me with a new camera. My husband spoiled me and I'm trying to not be mad at him for it. <laughs> for spending way too much money. Anyways, so, uh, hi, how are ya? This is likely my first video of 2020, even though it is December's wrap up. Life is crazy as my book stuff goes. I have learned immensely about myself that I have all these ideas and I love to film and I hate to edit. I'm sure everyone who has to edit videos can understand. I just hate it and so I have so many videos. I think I filmed around six videos that I wanted to do for like my end of the year videos and I'm not sure what I'm going to do with them. If I'm going to not upload any, if I'm going to just have them be way late, condense some, do film some, I upload some and not others, I don't know. But I need to get this one up right now. <laughs> so probably my Harry Potter video is not up yet. But that one will hopefully be my next video to come up maybe I don't know I don't know what I'm doing all I know is these are the books that I listen to in the month of December because I only read Harry Potter and then listen to audiobooks so let's just dive in to the last books that I read in 2019 the first book that I listened to I listened to part of it in November and I actually DNF'd and didn't think I was gonna do it but then I listened to it, and that was Early Riser by Jasper Ford, and this was interesting. It's exactly the genre and sounded like everything that I wanted, but it was just so far over my head. This is like a dystopian world where, like, we go into hibernation in the winter and there are some people ouch sorry I'm sitting on my foot uh there are some people who don't and they kind they're called night walkers they kind of are like zombies but not really like they're dangerous like they'll eat you but they're not dead they're just hungry and they kind of just like lose their mind and then it follows this guy who somehow that's not his job but there's like a the government stays awake during the winter and kind of keeps everybody safe and warm and like regulates things and he somehow becomes like the apprentice to this guy I can't even remember what they're called what his job is I don't know but his name is Charlie and he encounters just really strange stuff and basically what it is is they're coming to find out or he's coming to find out that their people are having these dreams and these dreams are causing them to commit suicide so they think and like I said it just there was a lot of really interesting stuff, but again, the plot point, not plot point, but the thing, the trope, if you want to call it that, that I hate in books, and we all know, is when there are more than four characters. There literally is probably about 20 characters in this book, and I was so confused, and it just, like, had made-up words that I didn't understand. If, and then there's the thing. It's written, so it's not in the U.S., which is fine. It's in England. I don't think it's, like, London, but maybe. But, so I don't know, maybe it's just some of the words were, like, British words that I just don't know what they are, but they seemed like they were made up, and so I was confused about a lot of stuff. And, like, the writing was kind of weird, and just, this book is way too smart for me. <laughs> but at the end, when I kept reading it, and I got to the end, like, the ending was... A great ending I can't even remember it now but I remember at the time thinking like oh like that was good but it would have been mind-blowing if I would have understood the entire time who the characters were and what I was actually reading if that makes sense 
<laughs> it could have been crazy. So if you enjoy complex books and books of things like that, you will love this book. It was just too over my head for me to really understand. So I think I gave it, I don't know if I gave it a two or a three star, I maybe gave it a three. The next book that I picked up was A Thousand Pieces of You by Claudia Gray. This is the first in a trilogy series. I don't really know. I will not be continuing. Uh, this book, to really pull my memory, is about a group of scientists who have created like a time traveling device and it's like it's not no it's not time traveling that's I guess I don't know is that time traveling it's like you can go into it's like split dimensions it's the same idea of dark matter as in when it comes to when you may have to make a decision no matter how big or small whether you decide to eat eggs instead of pancakes for breakfast your world splits into there where in one point of your life you ate pancakes and then this is how your life happened and at one point you ate eggs and this is how it happened and it just keeps branching in every decision you ever make and so using the locket time thing you can go to different things and it's about her parents are the it's a girl and her parents and some of their students are the ones who create this and so or a student betrays her family and so then they're trying to find him and yeah I don't know it just there was too much I don't like when things like that then have like a love story thrown into it I didn't feel like that was I mean I guess it was necessary I guess of why it makes sense but I don't really care I didn't care about the characters I didn't really care about anything that happened this was just kind of like whatever this is just not something that I feel like I want to read I don't know it just wasn't, <laughs> wasn't something that I really thoroughly enjoyed I just read it to get it off of my shelf again don't know what I rated it maybe a two as in a not for me. <laughs> Next I read, man, I did not have the greatest of uh, listening months, I'm just remembering. I listened to Tiger Lily, which um, I talked about at the very beginning of my channel when I started getting books. My favorite, one of my favorite Disney movies is Peter Pan. I just love Peter Pan so much. So I got a few, I think I have two, um, including this one of kind of like a Peter Pan retelling or Peter Pan ness book. So Tiger Lily, if you don't know, is the uh, in Peter Pan there's like Native American tribes in it, and uh, Tiger Lily is. See, and this is where I like think back on it. I'm like when I think about the movie, like was Tiger Lily like she just liked Peter Pan? Or Peter liked her too, and they had, I don't know. But this is just all about Tiger Lily and how she came to be. And okay, my apologies. My battery apparently just died. I am not used to this new camera yet, so I don't know if it even showed me a warning, but it just said it was dead. So I can't remember exactly where I was at. I was talking about Tiger Lily. Oh, so I was saying sorry for any lighting or this chair any lighting changes placement changes I don't know just sorry <laughs> uh, we're talking about Tiger Lily and basically it's a lot about Tiger Lily but it's from the perspective of Tinkerbell and this was interesting it's just pretty interesting I think this is marketed as YA because it's Peter Pan and all that, but it just felt like, I don't know what 15-year-old or younger, I mean, even this seemed almost even like middle grade. Peter Pan to me seems like middle grade. You're not watching Peter, well, a lot of us are watching Peter Pan older just for nostalgic and things like that, but Peter Pan is obviously for young children. But this was, I wouldn't call it flowery, 
but just like I don't know again a word that came to my mind was like nonsensical but that's not really what it is it was just it felt like a whole lot of nothing it's the story a tiger lily and how she came to be and what her life is like and like I said it's Tinkerbell following her and just watching her it's before any of them are really connected to Peter Peter is in this there's a part like that where Wendy comes up which doesn't make sense because Tinkerbell is not really with Peter like they know who Peter is but she's not I don't know, it was just seemed so all over the place and I didn't understand and just so fictional and fantastical but trying to like be smart and like make you feel something. It's all about these different people in her tribe. I don't know how to even describe this, let's see. It says, before Neverland faded into myth, it was a remote and dangerous island filled with deadly mermaids, psychotic pirates, and watchful fairies. And before Peter Pan belonged to Wendy, he belonged to the girl with the crow feather in her hair, Tiger Lily. So it is, there is a love story with Peter and Tiger Lily, and she's like supposed to be married to a different guy in her tribe who is a young boy but like an alcoholic and he abuses her and she likes has an affair with Peter like that's what I said it's when 15 year old Tiger Lily meets the alluring teenage Peter deep in the forbidden woods the two form a bond that's impossible to break but also impossible to hold on to as the leader of the Lost Boys the most fearsome of Neverland's inhabitants Peter is an unthinkably as Peter is an unthinkable match for Tiger Lily, with her betrothal to another man and deadly enemies threatening to tear them apart. The lovers seem doomed, but it's the arrival of Wendy Darling, an English girl who's everything Tiger Lily is not, that leads Tiger Lily to discover that the most dangerous enemies lurk inside, even the most loyal and loving heart. <sighs> like, it has that... But really, I don't know, Wendy, I mean, she plays a crucial part in the ending of this, but she's really only in this book for, like, a chapter or so. I don't know. It's, it was a weird one. It was real, real strange, and I didn't enjoy it, to be honest. If you liked this, let me know. Like, again, it's kind of like in this, I mean, completely different, but kind of in the same sense of Early Riser, that this, even though it was YA and whatever seemed so far over my head that there was like no coming back for me. I would love to, to hear other people talk about this book. I know it's old but <laughs> yeah. And next is a book that I don't even remember listening to and that is The Memory of Light by Francisco X. Stork. Let me, I remember reading this one. Uh, this is like the worst kind of book where it's like it's a paperback but it's so stiff. I hate reading these books. <laughs> Total side note. Um, this one, again, I just kind of put it on the background and just didn't pay attention to it that much. It's about, again, kind of a mental psych ward, mental institution, where this girl uh, tries to kill herself. Her dad and stepmom like, don't want to believe it and don't believe that she used to be in treatment and just want her to come home and get over it, but she meets this colorful group of people while she is there, and they become some of her, like, best friends, and they go to the psychiatrist there, also has, like, a ranch-type farm thing that she sends a lot of her cases to, to, it's kind of like, I don't know, you know, have you heard of those camps that, like, troubled youth go to, that they, like, do really hard labor to try to, you know, whatever. it's kind of like that, but uh, they get to stay there and, like, put in fences and 
milk cows and stuff like that. And then it's like her outside of that going home. Um, it just wasn't, it didn't do anything for me. It wasn't anything new or exciting. Again, it's one of those books that if this is the first one you read of that type of dark genre, you might really enjoy it a lot. It might bring up a lot of interesting things for you. But for me, it was just blah, run of the mill, a three star. And lastly, I listened to Lucy Keating's Dreamology, which I have wanted to read this book just because it's so pretty and I had really high expectations for it. High at the beginning, lower because I knew it was YA and I just don't, you know, love that. But still, I was hoping since it was so pretty that I would really enjoy it. And it was not that great <laughs> for me. Uh, it's about a girl who has been dreaming of this boy and they're in love in their dreams and she sees him like every night and they go on these crazy wild adventures and she goes to a new school and that boy is real. He walks into one of her classes and come to find out that he has also been dreaming of her and so then they go, they find out that they go to this place, it's like center, it's like a dream center that she was going there because she was having nightmares after her mom died and so her dad sent her there to try to help her with that. Uh, I can't remember why he was going there. But somehow they are now dreaming about each other and they didn't know they're real and then it deals with, you know, he's in a relationship in his real life and he wants to be with her and, you know, just some different things. Their journeys to find out what's going on and why they're doing this, if it can be fixed, if they can control it, yada, yada, yada. I found it very strange. It tried to be like magically contemporary whatever, but it just like felt cheesy and strange and a bit ju juvenile, which is the downfall for me in YA. So this just wasn't one that I like. I know I'm sure tons of people really will like this. It could be very interesting. But again, two or three stars. Either a not for me or it was just fine and whatever. But those were the books, the five books that I listened to in December. And I will at some point have the video up of my Harry Potter reading experience from December. But I wanted to do this form of this wrap up. So that is the end of the 2019. Well, that's not true. I still do Harry Potter. Okay, uh, well, I'm gonna go and try to get my life together book-wise. I'm really, really excited about 2020 and the plans and ideas and just all around everything in my life, books and not books. So, I will catch you next time. Please subscribe if you haven't already, if you enjoy this, if you enjoy me looking like a hot mess. This camera, I'm looking myself in the viewfinder, is like really doing stuff for me. I mean, you see every pimple, every imperfection. Now I might have to actually start getting ready in my videos because you're all gonna see it. But again, you know, I kind of just still don't really care. <laughs> but yeah, anyways, I love y'all and I'll see you next time. Bye!